many of us face immense challenges in our lives. I want to uncover secrets and principles to building a life filled with purpose, not weighed down by hardship. I'm Kirsty, your host in this journey. Each episode, I'll be talking to different people, sharing their stories and practical steps to help us to design a life that we love. Joining me today, I've got Abby Hanneman, and Abby has an amazing story. She's a four-time suicide survivor, and actually the last time she went to commit suicide, she made a bit of a pact with life gave it six more months to see what could happen if she pursued some new things. And the outcome is amazing because obviously she's still here to talk to us today. So Abby, thank you for coming on the show. I can't wait to hear your story. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Take us back in time. Tell us a little bit about how this all happened. Tell us about the first suicide attempt and what got you there. What was going on in your life? Well, um, I was in my early 20s and... I was really, my life, I I really didn't have any anchor or any kind of identity um, of of any substance that I I just was kind of floating and doing a lot of drugs and a lot and drinking a lot. And so um, for, as it turns out, you know, I, I know now for someone like myself who was very active oriented and goal oriented, I didn't know that at the time. For a personality like mine, that's just a, a recipe for disaster. So kind of a type A personality. So if you're going to do drugs and you're going to do alcohol, you are going to do it right, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so that was, that was what set it up. And um, I just was in a lot of pain I think, you know, there certainly were childhood things that contributed, you know, that created like the fertile ground for being self-destructive, um, you know, but ultimately it was what I was doing at the time that I just didn't have any sense of self or any sense of direction. Mm-hmm. And, you know, myself, my friends, we just got wasted every day. And um, I didn't want to live like that. And so I tried to kill myself more than once. So how did you try and kill yourself? And you obviously survived. So was it a half-hearted attempt? To, was it? Well, hang on. Uh, the, the first time um, I, I did go to the hospital, I cut um, my arms and I went to the hospital. And the only reason they released me was because I did have a therapist at the time. And so she met me at the hospital and they released me in her care. Um, there was another time that I overdosed and they kept me for a few days, um, in, because out of medical necessity, because they thought that I had destroyed my liver. Um, another time I, I cut myself again and they kept me for three days for a suicide watch. Um, and, and there's nothing, um, more sobering than being locked up to get yourself like, okay, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to give them the answers they want to hear, you know, to get yeah. out whatever it takes to get out of here. Exactly. Um, So did you you intend to die in those situations? I did. How did you feel when you didn't? Kind of how I felt going into it. Angry, (laughs) you know, upset. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know that I, at that time I didn't know what a quote unquote cutter was. And I think that that's a, it is a different mindset. You know, the cutter feels, I guess, um, relief when they see blood. And for me, I just was done with life and I, and I wanted out. Um, so yeah, I, 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 it was my intention and each time it didn't happen. Yeah. And then you you mentioned a fourth time to me briefly just before we started recording the call, a fourth time where everything changed. Right. Me. Well, yeah, it was kind of the ultimate pivot point for me. Uh, I, that morning, I had found my best uh, my partner in bed with my best friend, and it was kind of that last. I just couldn't take the pain, and so that night I decided I would kill myself, and I and I reason you know i had failed before so i thought well if i really want to die i can look myself in the eyes and i can slit my throat except that i couldn't i tried but i couldn't do it 
And so I knew that that meant that I didn't really want to die. And of course that then, you know, open this path, if you will, of what, what can I do if, if, because life just for me was too painful as it was. Mm. And that night, I mean, when I really could not slit my own throat, I dropped my knees. I was in tears. I ultimately that was in my bathroom. I made it master, you know, I was in a master bedroom. So I made my way to, into my bed and there were all these books that I had read self-help books. Um, and I looked, I looked at those books and I just, you know, I, I was at a, a huge crossroads without knowing it. And I just thought, well, what are these books are, is, do they have anything in common? Is there a common thread that runs through them all? And when I looked at the different titles, I realized affirmations in some form or fashion was definitely one of a thread that ran through all of these diverse books. Um, so I decided I was going to, that night I decided, okay, I'm going to try two new things. I'm going to give up drugs and alcohol. And I'd already kind of started, you know, getting away from that scene, the party scene, but um, I made a commitment that night to let go and not do any drugs and not do any alcohol and in instead surf, start surfing. And I had never surfed, um, but I knew how to swim. My first job was as a lifeguard. So, you know, it, it wasn't a stretch to go out in the ocean for me. Um, so I decided to surf and do affirmations. And the next morning, I didn't really sleep that night, but the next morning I went to a surf shop here in Ocean Beach in San Diego and found out that I couldn't actually afford a surfboard and a wetsuit. The water's really cold here. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to have them both. So I ended up with a bodyboard, fins, and a wetsuit. And I literally went to the parking lot and put it all on and went out into the ocean. And it was winter and I went out to uh, Beach Break, in, in Beach Break, which is punishing in the winter here um and i tried to paddle out and of course i just got beat up um but it felt good to be doing something different yeah now part of this whole bargain that night was i gave myself six months and it was you know if i could not change things or if i didn't feel any differently in six months time i could kill myself any way that i wanted didn't have to slip my throat Whatever the easiest, most painless way out was, is what I was going to choose. So, um, you know, I just, I committed to this thing for six months and, and it ultimately really worked out. Um, at the time, I didn't know. I mean, I was, in my mind, I, I always said that I hated life. I hated people. I hated the world. That was the, the refrain that constantly ran through my head. And so I just... I changed it all to, I love life, I love people, I love this world, which of course was like so foreign in my head and in my mouth because I had never said that. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, and, and so I just say it like a hundred times a day. And then I kept going out in the ocean four or five times a week, um, all year, you know, but, but in this, at this time, it took about three months for me to learn how, and I just, you know, there wasn't YouTube back then to figure out, yeah. to watch and see how things are done or, and it didn't occur to me to hire anybody. I'm a bootstrapper from day, you know, from the day I was born, I think I just bootstrap everything. So I kept paddling out, paddling out and mother nature kick the you know what out of me for a long time and then finally I rode a wave like it's supposed to be ridden and it's just it was glorious it was like flying and I popped off the back of the wave and I just was I felt this like yeah you know like I, I lit up I was I felt I love life I felt it and it was as if it was literally I think if it had been like an animated cartoon you would have seen like me getting reconfigured on a cellular level you know, yeah. like I just felt completely transformed. It changed the way I interacted with people. Like mm -hmm. I was much more open. I made eye contact. I wanted to engage with people. So it completely changed my life. And, and then I started going to school and, and realizing that I could excel in every single subject from art to science, to math, to studio arts. And I just got really lit up 
by bodyboarding and learning. Yeah. And then of course, all, and, and what, here's what's interesting. So like for me, talk therapy did not work. AA did not work. It actually made me worse. It made me more suicidal. Mm -hmm. um, so, so doing things that lit me up, all of the self-destructive stuff fell away effortlessly. Wow. It's gone. That's amazing. I love it. It's interesting when we allow ourselves to have some fun and to bring yeah. some happy times. You yeah. know, we, we often think we need to work harder, we need to strive harder, we need to do all these yeah. things. But you bring it down to such a simplistic level of you went out, you found something that was fun, and it changed your life. Yeah. And, and of course, in retrospect, I can see where, you know, that was the perfect prescription, if you will, for me personally, like it was really intense physically. And I had a lot of fire in me. I was in my twenties. I was young. I was yeah. strong. I was athletic. So it was like the perfect outlet. The ocean is very healing for most people, even if they yeah. just go sit and watch it, right. Much less be in it. Um, and it still had that, it was very edgy, you know, because it's dangerous out there. Things happen. Yeah. And, you know, you get catapulted through the air and you don't know <laughs> what's going to happen when you land. Um, yeah. You know, and then there was just this tenacity and, and then the discipline of doing it every day. And so it, what I didn't even know at the time, but later certainly appreciated is how much um, I just took like some you know, the diamond in the rough and started polishing it little by little, like, oh, I am tenacious. Oh, I am, you know, disciplined. Oh, I am strong. I'm, you know, brave. I, I've rescued surfers who were in trouble and things like that. So the lifeguard in me from that first job has never gone away. Still to this day, even when I'm sitting on my board, I'm always looking around to see like, are there any little kids in trouble? I probably can't help any surfers at this juncture. I'm like, <laughs> they, I, I, we need someone a little bigger, a little stronger than me. But, um, Certainly little kids that I see them, they start to get that panic look and I go out and I grab them and I pull them in and, you know, help yeah. them out. But, I mean, that's just, that's just life out, you know, in the, when you spend a lot of time in the waves. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Perfect, perfect prescription, you know. Do you know why surfing? Like you talked about being a lifeguard earlier in life, but why suddenly start surfing? Well, I, I live in San Diego. And so when that night, as I thought about what can I do, what can I do that's radically different from what I'm doing right now? Mm. Um, it's something I've never done. I wanted it, that, that for, for whatever reason, that was key for me. It was like something you've never done. And I'm like, well, I've never ridden a wave. So, and it's, and it's accessible, right? It's something yeah. I could go, if, as long as I've got a car and the, the equipment, I can go out there every single day. So I knew it was accessible to me. I didn't have a lot of money. Like I said, I couldn't afford the surfboard and the wetsuit. So I had to go yeah. like, you know, scale it back a little bit. Um, and it just turned out to be, I, could, I literally could not have chosen better. And maybe it was divinely inspired. I don't that know. was my question. Yeah, do you <laughs> think that there was maybe a higher power yeah. involved in this? Yeah. Potential. Yeah, I mean, you know, my, I think I probably went through a fleet or two of guardian angels. So uh -huh. that might have been their last gasp. Like, okay, push her into the waves yeah. and she's on her own. <laughs> yeah. Oh, make I it, love it. Don't make it, but do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And that. then what I've since realized, because I, it, what it did it is it, 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 it catapulted me into this, this mindset and maybe it is who, who I am, you know, of, constantly trying new things and challenge challenging myself and embracing the unknown embracing things that are new and different and i'm, I'm finding it really interesting that i hear so much about um anxiety now like that seems to be the thing that plagues people mm. and so they're not doing things because of this anxiety and instead wanting to take a pill or you know I, and i don't know anything about anxiety so believe me i'm not an expert and i'm not saying somebody shouldn't take anti-anxiety medicine or anything like that. But I just know that riding waves, every wave is different, even on the same day, right? In the same session. And there are times where you can easily get yourself in really big trouble out there. We have big surf in San Diego. Um, and it, you've got to keep your wits about you or you'll get hurt or you'll hurt someone else. 
-hmm. because there's always that potential as well in a crowded lineup. So I think that that discipline and, and that doing it every day and always encountering something new out there, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit like later I studied yoga and we have the discipline of yoga on the mat and off the mat. And can you take what you're learning on the mat and apply it to your life? And so I think that that's what happened with me with riding waves was, okay, well, okay, I've never done public speaking. I'm scared to death of it, but I'm going to do it. Mm. I mean, come on, what's the worst that can happen? You're not, you know, you're not going to get killed, yeah. right? You're just, exactly. you're just going to be uncomfortable. You're going to feel sensations, right? That you've never felt maybe. Um, and you're going to have some quote unquote anxiety, anxiety about it. Okay. Yeah. So, so there are just a lot of things that I ended up doing that really would be anxiety provoking and producing, but I embraced it because I think so many times when I was riding waves, I was always facing something new and unknown and, and navigating it. Yeah. And that constant challenge of not knowing what's coming, new mm -hmm. obstacles, new things. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. I love it. So I ended Ended up completing college. I was a college dropout at 18. So I completed college. I graduated with the highest honors. Um, I completed a, an alternative master's in holistic nutrition. So I became like the antithesis of what I was instead of being yeah. a self-destructive. I was the health, wellness, you know, nutrition expert, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and loved it because I helped other people feel better. And I helped other people, you know, do some things, get stronger, fitter, mm. you know. Mm. And that must have made you feel better as well to be able to help them and see the progress along the way. Yeah. And to be in that kind of environment where yeah. it's health oriented. Yeah. That was a good, a good choice for me. And it just was a natural kind of, you know, extension. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And, I, and I'm an artist. So I learned how to cut and grind uh, shaped stone. I'm a lapidary artist. Oh and, my goodness. You've done I, so much. <laughs> and then I became a silversmith because I had to be able to set the stones that I was cutting and shaping. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've done a lot. I, I, I've, I've taught classes. So I have scars on my arms and that's one of the things that has been kind of a, in some, at, at times challenging because, you know, I would be leading classes. I, I worked at two premier yoga uh, retreat centers, uh, Kripalu in Massachusetts and um, Puerto Vida in Costa Rica. And, you know, I'm standing up there in a, in a tank top with scars on my arms. Mm. So, you know, that would just, it's just always in the back of my mind, but it was one of the things that I think people understood like, okay, she has walked her talk. Mm this is a person for whom wellness means something. Mm, exactly. Yeah. You've come a long and, way. And it was kind of, for some people, it's, it allowed them to share some things with me that maybe they had never shared. Maybe somebody in their, in their family had committed suicide and it was, you know, a, a, a point of enormous shame and pain. Mm. And so they were able to share it with me and, or they maybe had been suicidal at one time themselves. And so they were able to share that with me when maybe they'd never shared it with anyone in their life. Mm. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love how such a dark time, like for you, you were rock, rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And yet all of this goodness has been able to come out of this. It's just amazing. Yeah. Can you take us back to the six month period? Were you aware? Did you write a date? Did you circle it on a calendar? Or what were your thoughts leading up to that six month point? Well, so I didn't know, all I knew was that night that I could not kill myself by slitting my throat because I, I thought, okay, I've, I've slit my arms, I've overdosed, I slit my wrist, none of that worked. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. And so I knew like, okay, you slit the jugular, you're gone, right? There is no, somebody comes in and saves you uh, moment. So um, when I couldn't do that, I didn't know at that point, I didn't know anything, mm. you know, that I didn't know that the next day I was going to be in the ocean, for instance, mm. it took, you know, that entire night of just kind of soul searching and just trying to come up with something that would at least change the trajectory of my life. I pray and, and I may or may not have even known the word trajectory at that time, right? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I it wasn't like I'm like, you know, sitting back, philosophizing about, yeah. 
how can I change and embrace and make this meaningful? None of that. It was just, how can I stop crying? Number one. Mm -hmm. And how can I stop feeling this pain? Cause this, mm -hmm. and this is the one thing that I think it's so important for, for people to know and maybe even just remember is so many of the things that we go through, especially when you're younger, they're temporary. Mm -hmm. That pain does change. And, and you can change it, you know, mm. but in the moment, it just sometimes seems so overpowering and overwhelming that, you know, there doesn't seem to be alternatives. For mm. me, the pain was so enormous that I just wanted to die. When I couldn't do that, and again, just, it, it, it just started, uh, it was a, a night of soul searching and what can I possibly do? And I knew Again, I had already started to kind of step away from the drugs and alcohol. I wasn't off of it completely, but I'd started to kind of, at least not, it wasn't, you know, um, at its height. So, so I was cleaner than maybe a few years previous or six months. I don't remember, but I do know that, you know, I, I knew that that wasn't helping, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly not helping me. Um, and then again, reading the, I'd read a lot of books, many of them, my mother had recommended to me. She probably saw the train wreck that I was, but all of that was from afar. Like my family didn't know anything about my suicide attempts Gosh. until much, much later. Um, I went home for a wedding in August, uh, home was Virginia at the time. And I, before I even flew out, I told my mom, like, okay, Virginia is really hot in the summer like brutally hot. And I'm like, mom, you don't know this, but I've tried killing myself and I have scars on my arms and I know I'm going to have to wear a short sleeve shirt. Like I can't get away with a long sleeve shirt in the middle of August in Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she was very, you know, she was very philosophical about it. And she just said, well, I'm sure they're like, you know, badges of honor. So just come home, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So she, um, that was the first time I went. So my family never knew anything about my suicide attempts until that time. And then of course we didn't have any discussions about those, you know, it was yeah. just, wow. Okay. You did some damage now. Did you feel like you needed some discussion around those? Or was uh, it okay to just move on? Not with my family. No. Okay. Because that's just not the type of family that I came from. So yeah. And you'd come to terms with what, with the fact that does and things like that. And ultimately everything we do, it's, it's on us, you know, like mm. that's the one thing I think that's so important to embrace. If you want to lead a radically inspired life, you have to make the choices to put yourself in the position to do so. Mm. Nobody's going to do it for you. You know, nobody, now it doesn't mean you can't have heroes or mentors or teachers or people that inspire you and maybe even the support of a of family to do things. But ultimately you're the person that makes the choice of what you put in your mouth every day, mm. you know, what you do with your body every day. What would you say to somebody who is listening to this and thinking maybe they're in the same situation, they're feeling suicidal, they're feeling like there's no hope that they can't continue. And you're saying it's up to the person to make the choices. What would you say to someone who's really struggling to get started to take back that control and power to make those positive choices? Yeah. So just from my own experience, you know, I'm not a doctor. Of course. Um, yeah. I'm not a PsyD, a PhD, et cetera. Although I, I did apply for a program and I it, well, thought I might go down that path at one time <laughs> in my life and, yeah. and uh, for the PsyD. But I, um, from in my experience, find anything that lights you up and do it and do it every single day. And, and it's going to be different things for different people, right? Um, it could be gardening for somebody, you yeah. know, but uh, for me, the being really physical, not talking about it, but being physical and throwing myself and pitting myself against mother nature, if you will, mm -hmm. that's what worked. Now I know, um, you know, I've had certainly friends who've kind of pulled themselves. They might not have been in the hole that I was in, but you know, they've done things in the same thing. Some of them, you know, they just, they're also surfers. Some are, 
you know, maybe started doing dance, physical things. So, so there seems to be, um, you know, something very transformational about um, putting yourself in that uh, a space where you're physically exhausting your body, mm. physically pushing yourself. So I think there's probably different people. Maybe it's for some, it's cerebral. If they take classes and they're inspired and, or reading certain types of books, you know, maybe would do it, but, um, and, you know, artistic certainly. So, you know, I pursued a lot of different things and still do to continue to explore, like, who am I independent of that family I grew up in? Mm. Because they're not to blame for anything. I have to make choices that help me understand who I am. Oh, I'm an artist. Wow, I certainly never knew that. Well, I knew that because I took classes in studio arts and photography. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I, knowing that I have an interest in everything that's like spiritual and then, you know, the, the nutrition piece of things is fascinating to me. And I'm all constantly tweaking my diet and refining mm -hmm. it and, you know, anything. And, and then different challenges come up. So as you age, now you've got a whole new set of challenges, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm like tweaking things and making adjustments because I want to age as well as I can in terms of uh, still being able to do everything that I want to do and yeah. not have, you know, and that's physical pain. So I, I think finding something that lights you up and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and, and, and keep trying new things. It's exciting to try new things and you yeah. don't have to have, you know, you don't have to have a lot of money to do that because most cities, I mean, right now we, we have an unprecedented access to information and classes, right? Exactly. Online. Yeah. Right. And then in town, in cities, you have meetup groups, you have, of course, community colleges and all types of, of, of options for learning and putting yourself in new situations that frankly don't cost a lot of money. So money can't be the barrier. It can't be the excuse, right? Mm -hmm. Then I've had, I've, I've had the opportunity to travel some and that's just been, you know, I, I love it. I love being in new cultures and, um, you know, getting perspective on how small my little world can yeah. be, right? If you exactly. travel, you know yeah, that. You travel. Yeah. 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 So it's just good for perspective, you know, and, and sometimes you can just do a road trip and it's like, okay, I got out of my routine. Yeah. Right, yeah, making a change. Yeah. Mm. You talked about how you went in and you looked at all the books on your bookshelf and they were all self-help books. You're looking for that theme. Is there one book which has really helped you in particular, one that stands out? Ooh. Well, I've read thousands. So I'm sure. I am a voracious <laughs> reader and I've literally read thousands and I did my undergrad in English with an emphasis in creative writing. So, I mean, I... I can't even begin to, I, I wish I'd kept track. Um, I did love Wayne Dyer. He was, uh -huh. he was someone that I found, uh, you know, resonated. Um, that's, he's the only, he's the author that really kind of pops up, pops up for me in this moment. Mm. I can't say there's any one book, you know, um, because I've read so many and continue to. Mm. And the affirmations, again, I'm thinking of people who are listening and potentially feeling like they want to have a go at this. The affirmations, how did you decide what they would be? Yeah, so for me, I, I knew that I had this kind of this one constant refrain that ran, ran through my head, which was that I hate life, I hate people, I hate this world. So I knew I just, that was just the building box, right? The foundation was, well, first of all, I can't keep saying that and embrace life. You know, that, that kind of just was, uh, whether I knew it or I just understood it at a kind of a deeper level, I'm not sure, um, you know, cause I was kind of messed up. So I can't, it's hard to say now, like exactly what my thought processes were. Um, but I know that I thought I've, I have to make a change. So I can't, if I'm going to embrace life, I can't think. I hate life, I hate people, I hate the world, right? Mm -hmm. So I just flipped those, period. Um, and so, and there's just been so many things I've done along the way, Kirsty, I can't even begin to tell you. Because for one, like, um, I had a hard time falling asleep at night. So I studied 
hypnotherapy thinking I might become a hypnotherapist. Um, and, and in part because of past life regressions, I was fascinated by Brian Weiss's books on past yeah. life regression yeah, um, and near death experiences and, and that sort of thing. And so ultimately what I realized is I could use all those tools to help myself at night. And I did, you know, I do these elaborate um, and every night the exact same thing that, you know, just an elaborate um, relaxation technique that I, would help me fall asleep at night. Then I realized, well, I can also use that for healing. So, you know, one of the things I did is I just imagined that I was in the delivery room when I was born. So if I had held myself as a baby, what would I have told that baby? How would I have, yeah. you know, and, and what, what, what does it feel like to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, and then I would do a lot of healing for myself as a child um, because I grew up in a pretty violent um, household and I was tiny. I'm only five foot three, 115 pounds now, right? So I was a tiny child. And um, so I would imagine, you know, imagine I would do these very elaborate each night, same thing as I'm falling asleep. And sometimes I'd get further along and sometimes less, but you know, things that where I took myself as a child and, and, and allowed her to go with a man who would then take her like to a gym where she climbed rock walls and, mm. you know, have fun, but be safe, mm. right? In the company of a stranger, right? Mm. So there were a lot of things that I think that I've done along the way that are, again, there are just so many things. It's hard to, you know, remember them all. Mm. Um, you know, but in terms of affirmations, you know, where's that, where's that pain point? Is it that you don't feel like you're a good parent or that you don't feel like you're attractive? You know, what is it? What's the deep pain point? And that's the thing you got to turn. It's that, you know, that thing. So for me, it was this all encompassing. I just felt like I hated everything. And and that wasn't the truth. I, there were a lot of things that I loved, but I was so focused on, um, you know, not, I think my, you know, my needs, were, I wasn't meeting my own needs mm. and I didn't have anyone else meeting my needs. I was just out kind of floundering mm. as a young adult. And uh, so finding that direction, finding something that lit me up, could be volleyball, it could be sewing. I mean, you know, it could be, yeah. So many different things it could be just take a walk around the block um you know but for me it was throwing myself into the ocean and really pitting myself and what's fu what's funny is you know surf can be so many things but we we have pretty bad rip currents here we have some big surf especially in the winter and um no matter what the conditions are i mean it can be foggy it can be cold our water is very cold um so no matter what, I always get out of the ocean with a smile and I'm usually laughing. And even when huge waves coming at me, like I just am like, I'm, I almost marvel at the fact that I can even be out there in that. And there are times where the surf's so big, I don't even take a board. Like I just go out there in the surf just to be in the big, crazy surf. Oh, wow. When, you're, with, when you don't have a board, it's very easy to dive under the wave, right? And, and yeah. be safe. Yeah. So, so you're yeah. still surfing very regularly now. You're still finding yeah. this makes you happy. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What else is going on? What, um, what else is going on for you? Like, how do you look at your future? Do you feel positive about your future? I do. Uh, yeah. So I'm, um, I actually just got back from Santa Fe and Albuquerque where I took a two day workshop in, um, uh, jewelry making using a hydraulic press so something i'd never experienced but i i knew it was really That's interesting kind of fun, though. <laughs> yeah it was great um i do a lot of photography and earlier this year i i got lucky very lucky and got to go to la paz and swim with whale sharks on my birthday oh wow um and photograph them underwater i have a little gopro so i was able to photograph them and um so I just, I, it, for me, it's just constantly filling myself with new, like, I know for me, I, I need to have a creative outlet. So, mm -hmm. um, in fact, this morning I was at a silversmith uh, jewelry makers uh, studio where she actually rents out studio time 
because I need access to some different tools that I don't have. Mm. So, you know, making more jewelry, um, doing what I'm doing with you, like looking for opportunities to speak and put myself out there and, um, you know, see if it interests people. Is this something that is meaningful? And can I, can I do something? What prompted all of this, Kirsty, is, you know, I was living this private life. I never talked about my past mm. at all. And um, in November, I read a Facebook post about a 15-year-old who had taken his life. He was being cyberbullied for being gay, and he killed himself. Mm. And I thought then, I can do more. I didn't know what that meant. I still don't. I mean, you know, all I know is, well, you know what? I'm going to reach out, and I'm going to talk about my story, mm. that I did try killing myself, and that I came out on the other side. And thank God, I've had amazing experiences, like, like mind-blowing, you know, like swimming with whale sharks, you know, that, like, there's so many things. Now, it doesn't mean life has not been challenging. Mm, it exactly. has. Life has a lot of challenges. Mm. Doesn't mean that I'm happy every day. I'm not. There's a lot of days where I'm frankly pretty darn grumpy all day, you know, um, but, but I'm still really glad that I'm alive and that I get to go be in the ocean or, you know, that I get to help a friend who needs help or mm -hmm. that I get to make a new piece of jewelry that I didn't know I could make. So, you know, and then the whole, from the perspective of travel, like there's, there, you know, at least a hundred places still I want to go. I want to be underwater photographing sea turtles and oh, these are, wow. you know, just so now I'm not going to do that in San Diego because, you know, we don't have a lot. I mean, there are some here and there sea turtles, but it's, you know, I'm going to have to go somewhere to do that. Mm. So, you know, it just gives me goals. It gives me direction. I have a sense of self that I never had before. Um, you know, and I, I've done and been around amazing people too. Yeah. You know, I've really got to, to experience the joy of being around joyful people, people who love life and embrace life and, and want to, you know, be, be vulnerable to put themselves in a position that they don't know what the outcome is going to be of what they're doing. So mm -hmm. often that's my case. I have no idea where this is going to lead, for instance. Mm -hmm. I've done a couple other interviews, no idea. Maybe it leads somewhere, maybe it doesn't lead anywhere. And that's okay. That is okay. And that's you know, exciting, right? Yeah, it's just, just part of the journey. Like yeah. sometimes you're gonna do things that, that you realize, you know, that lead somewhere. And some, sometimes you're gonna do things that don't. Like for me, um, you know, the, the being in the, in the ocean, it doesn't pay, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I, I can pay to ride waves but it's probably the most important thing I do. Yeah, because it's because about your- Because that's the stage for everything else in life. It, it really, it keeps me engaged, keeps me lit up, it keeps me strong, it, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, it, our beaches are stunning. So I get to be in just like the most beautiful environment, one of the most beautiful environments in the world. I'm sure you are as well. Um, you know, but like that, that I put myself in that setting and I, I can be out in the waves, doesn't cost me anything once I've bought my gear, right? doesn't cost me anything to go yeah. out there. And then I sit there and I'm like, oh, dolphins, hey, a seal, you know, yeah, like wow. just, just amazing beauty. So I, I feel always very grateful when mm -hmm. I'm out there and very lucky. Yeah. And that really is shining through your gratitude and the positivity, but also the realism that life can be hard and life can suck. But it's just maintaining the focus. Being and it can be great. Yeah. So it, so it can and this is, I think one of the real key things I remember once I was going to college and, and you know, this was kind of after the fact, right. And I remember I had two very distinct um, opinions on the same topic. Mm -hmm. And I remember that night, like, wow, okay, that's really interesting because they're opposing opinions and I can embrace them both. And it's like, Hmm. So it just, it was just kind of this like little, little pivotal learning moment of, you know what, stay open mm. because it's, life isn't just one thing. So yeah, things can be really hard and really painful and really amazing and really beautiful mm. and a whole lot of other stuff, exactly. All, you know, the whole exactly. spectrum. 
Yeah. So what happens, I think sometimes is, is certainly for me when I was feeling suicide and, and acting on my suicidal, you know, impulse is that I was focused on the one thing that was hard and pain. You know, I was just really, really completely focused on the pain as opposed to, well, I have some friends and I live in a beautiful city and I have options and I can do other things. I couldn't see any of those things because I was completely focused on that one negative. So then once I got into the discipline of every day feeling joy, which was a word, by the way, that I couldn't even say hmm. before I got out in the surf. Like it was just one of those words I, I, I thought was distasteful, which is hmm. mind blowing, right? Isn't that mind blowing? So Latin, like now it's my favorite word. And so I, I remember like, wow, every day I got to feel joy and gratitude being out now and, and being in the ocean, especially in the beginning, I mean, you know, I'd paddle 10 feet out and get dragged back 15 or 20 often mm. underwater. Like mm. it wasn't just, I paddled out and started riding waves. No, 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 no. I paddled out and got slammed and slammed and slammed. I mean, punished, just beaten up, but it felt so good again to just be doing something different and to be out in that sun and be in that water and that salt and everything. So I think that being able to plug into something that lights you up and that you feel joy, you can have a lot of hard stuff happening in life, but that it then allows you to be able to navigate it. Mm, absolutely. Abby, what would you say is your greatest message for the world? Just, just that. Find something that lights you up and do it again and again and again. And know that that could change, right? So at, maybe it's something that lights you up at 20 mm. and at 30, you, you know, you got to try something new. It's, it's not, it's maybe it isn't going to be the same thing your whole life, but find something that lights you up because if you're lit up, it's going to have a positive in, in impact on everybody around you. Mm, so and true. then keep trying new things. Yeah. Keep putting yourself in novel situations. Oh, that's wonderful. Abby Hanneman, thank you so much yeah, for coming yeah. on, for sharing your very vulnerable experience and giving us actual practical tips to go away and improve our life, design our future life and make life worth living. Thank Abby, you. Thank I, you. I, hope it, I hope it helps. I hope it helps. I'm sure it does. All right. Thank you, Kirsty. So if you've enjoyed this episode of the Let's Talk Life Design podcast, I would love your support to help me get these messages and conversations out there. It would mean a whole lot to me if you could either share the podcast with your friends and family, or if you could link to the podcast homepage over at letstalklifedesign.com. I really appreciate you joining me and your support as I talk to amazing guests on our show. My heart is really that I would be a channel for others to get their messages out there, to inspire our listeners to live their best life and to learn how to implement these life design principles. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll catch you soon. We will uncover more strategies and steps to designing that life that we love.